Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what I have here. I have a Black & Decker Leaf Hog Leaf Blower and Vac. Actually, uh, there's some housings here that kind of blow the leaves. This is just the fan and it actually can actually suck the leaves as well depending on which housing you put on. But this is just the motor component. Now, the last time I used this, it uh, was working fine and it just, bam, turned off. And I didn't smell any smoke or rubbery or plastic smell, so I don't think it's the motor itself. I think it's a switch. And I have been kind of playing around with the, this kind of a two-speed switch here and nothing seems to be working. I fiddle around with the plug, nothing seems to be working. So I'm going to open this up and see if I can figure out the issue. Okay, so this is a uh, Black & Decker again Leaf Hog. This is a BV4000 Type 2 uh, Leaf Hog. So if, if you have a similar type, uh, they also have Type 1s, Type 3s, etc. All kind of generally the same. But looking on the back here, it looks like it has, let's see, uh, maybe seven eight screws, so I'm going to just take uh, remove those screws and open up this back housing Okay, and so just remove the housing as carefully as possible I'm Trying to keep all these little switches and components in place so I don't lose where they're at And there you go that's the outside housing, and here's the inside of the vac. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the inside of this blower. So right here, this is the motor itself, the fan motor, and again, if this is blown, um, then essentially we throw this away, because this is kind of an expensive part, you might as well just buy a new blower. But again, I think it's the switch. Now, if you look at the exterior end, this is kind of the exterior switch here, but it's not the actual switch itself. This basically controls this le lever arm, so let me hold this. And so that's off, and then there's two power settings. There's, there's like a high and then a low. I'm not sure if I have them correct, but that basically controls this arm. And then it controls this little, I guess this would be just kind of a switch activator bobbin here. And so when it's in one direction, it activates the switch. This is the switch here. Let me zoom in right there. And you can see this is basically the switch. There's one setting there and then the other side is the other. So it's a two, two phase switch. So when this little bobbin here, which I don't know what it's called, but uh, it goes in one direction, it activates one side of the switch. And then when you turn it on the other side, it activates the other switch. Now this might have gotten dislodged um, and maybe not activating the switch, but I, I don't really think that's the issue. Uh, let's start with this switch here, uh, but kind of following it up, I'll blow up, uh, uh, back up a little bit. Now, uh, I believe the center part is the hot lead and the ends of the switch are the neutral. Um, if you look at the plug, there's no ground, but I think this is the neutral and this is the hot lead, and so that both of those leads go here. Uh, there's a little, little connector there. And there's a fuse right here. Now I'm interested in that fuse. I'll test that fuse out in a bit. But so let's first test to see if this switch works. And so I have my little handy dandy Radio Shack multimeter. I have set it to continuity. So uh, when these two leads connect, It'll make a beep saying that it is in continuity. And so first, I just wanna uh, just check these leads. I'll, I'll first uh, hit, the, hit the hot lead and neutral just to make sure that there's no uh, shorts. So connect them both, connect them both. They're not seen, nope, there's no shorts. So next I'm just gonna uh, touch the uh, neutral on hot and then activate the switch. Well, that one doesn't work. Hold on. Ah, so that that one. So when I hit the upper part of that switch, the switch works. Okay, let's do the other side, and that that works. So it's not the switch. Both of these leads work. The switch works in both directions. So it's not the switch. 
So next I want to go from the switch to the actual plug itself. Again, I think this is the hot lead, so I'm going to hit uh, contact the hot lead. And yes, there's continuity, so we know there's wire continuity all the way to that switch. Now let's do the neutral lead. No, there's no continuity. So, well, that could either mean that the fuse is blown or the motor's burnt out. So basically, uh, the hot lead goes directly to the switch, um, but the neutral lead basically goes through um, the fuse here and goes all the way through these wires in, in the motor. And so if there's any short anywhere, or if there's any blown component, that will prevent uh, the current from running. So we do know that the, uh, the hot lead looks okay, but the neutral leads are not. So first I wanna go and see if I can unwrap this little uh, fuse here. So you can see it's in a little bit of a shrink, it's a little in, in some shrink wrap. Um, I can't quite see inside. It, I mean, it looks from here like it might be okay. I'm gonna try to push these leads into this shrink wrap and see if I can get anything here. Okay, push that side so I can touch that side. Forcing the, this lead here. Okay, so I'm touching both of these to either end of the, the fuse here and I don't hear any continuity. So it may be a blown fuse. Now I'm gonna take off this end right here so I still in them in contact here. Now essentially this end goes into the motor here and goes through all these wires and then out to the plug end here. So if there's any fried component fried wire in the motor, I will not get any continuity from this end to here. So this will help test the motor. Make sure that I'm contacting. And there, I have full continuity from the fuse all the way through the motor to the plug. So that helps tell me that the motor may not, um, the motor may be fine. Maybe I just blew a fuse. And so I'm gonna open this up and see if I have a replacement fuse um, and see if that will help. Now one thing about these fuses is quite often when you get a blown fuse, it's not just the fuse. Something else happened, possibly something burnt out. Something might be wrong with this motor and therefore more current than you wanted was going through this fuse and the fuse popped. Um, it could have also been that the fan got stalled out, maybe some debris got stuck here and that caused the fuse to blow. So I'm hoping that uh, it's not a just an inherent issue with the motor, but once I re uh, replace this fuse, everything will work. So let me open this up and see what kind of fuse we're dealing with. So I'll take some snips. And got it exposed. I'm just gonna test this thing one more time. And yes, indeed, it is a blown fuse. Looks like the wire's okay, but let's see what kind of fuse this is. You can tell I burnt right here. Zoom in, that's where it burnt out right there. You can see right there. Okay, so I did check. It is a 15 amp fuse, uh, 125 volts. I don't have an exact um, replacement. I do have this ceramic one, which is 15 amps, 250 volt, uh, which is fine. You can go up in voltage. And uh, I don't mind replacing glass fuses with ceramic fuses, but um, going the other way, uh, I don't feel comfortable. But uh, So I'll, I'll replace this this fuse with this fuse.
Okay, and there we go. I think everything's installed correctly. Now I just want to reverse the process, get everything back in here. Before I close her up, I want to check for continuity. Let's go ahead and do that. That's good. And that's good. So there is continuity through the fuse. Very good. Try to shut this case, make sure all these components are in place. Okay. And the tricky part is this little bobbin here, making sure that that is in the proper position. Not exactly sure where how this bus go here. This is how it has a little bit of a spring to it, so I will fasten these first. Okay, so I do have to put the little leaf blower cover on before I test it because it has these little um, uh, pieces of plastic here that helps hold the switch mechanism in place. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, it's in there good. And then it's just a matter of plugging it in and testing her out. Make sure it's off. All right, go ahead and plug it in and test her out. Well, I think I fixed my leaf blower. So it was just that fuse, but you kind of saw how I diagnosed it. And hopefully if uh, you have an issue with yours, maybe not the fuse, maybe the switch, etc. Hopefully this video will help you out. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and even consider subscribing to my channel. I'll have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.